Okay, we're going to take a look at um, some organic reagents and how to work with them um, and sort of try to clear up some misconceptions about what can and can't um, dissociate into ions. So the first thing we'll look at are things that actually can dissociate into ions. The first category of things that can dissociate um, would be any strong acids. So that's things like HCl. And even though this is a covalent compound, if you think about dissolving it in solution, um, it can break up into ions, so it's perfectly fine to think of this as H plus and Cl minus, where the H plus is a reactive proton, Cl minus can be a nucleophilic anion. Um, the same thing with H2SO4. You can think of this as a source of protons. We'll do the proton and HSO4 minus anion. So those will dissociate. The other class um, of compounds we frequently encounter that will dissociate are uh, metals or metal ions. So what you want to look for here are metals bonded to nonmetals. So, easy example, sodium hydroxide. Here we have the metal sodium, that's a group 1A metal bonded to the nonmetal oxygen, and it's perfectly fine to treat this as sodium cations and hydroxide anions. Okay, and that's the case for um, you know any of your 1A metals, sodium, potassium, lithium, you're going to see the same thing in all of these cases. So another example, okay, potassium ethoxide. Potassium is a metal bonded to oxygen nonmetal. You can break that up into K plus OET minus. Um, you can do a sulfur analog. Okay, NaSCH3. Na plus SCH3 minus. Uh, just a couple more. KCN, potassium cyanide. Na plus. CN minus. Uh, one last one that we encounter quite a bit in class. Sodium amide, NaNH2. Na plus. NH2 minus. Okay, it's fine to break all of these into ions. And these all have the potential of being strong nucleophiles for um, substitution reactions. Um, and some of these will also act as uh, relatively strong bases that we'll see later on. But these are all negatively charged nucleophiles. Okay, but there's also things that you can't break apart into ions. So these are all 
things that are just um, composed of nonmetals, things like water, um, alcohols, like methanol, ethanol, uh, thiols, and amines. So a common practice um, is for students to break these up into ions, and you cannot do that. So, you know, I frequently see water written as a source of protons and hydroxide ions. You cannot do that with water. Water doesn't dissociate to any appreciable extent to be able to be used like that. Same thing with these alcohols, like ethanol. You can't write this as H plus OET minus. Um, and of course, you certainly can't do something like HO minus ET plus. That's totally wrong. So these you do not want to break apart into ions. The difference here is what you're going to use as a nucleophile in these are the lone pairs. So all of these atoms, we have lone pairs. And these are what makes the atoms nucleophilic. That's different than a negatively char charged lone pair. So let's use this, um, an example of ones that dissociate and ones that do not dissociate in a simple substitution react. So let's take a look at this in a substitution reaction. And we'll use a reactive electrophile like this benzylic cation. And here our nucleophile, let's start with a negative nucleophile. like NaSCH3. Okay, now this you can perfectly find break into ions because we have our metal sodium, sulfur nonmetal, and here our negative nucleophile will attack our electrophilic carbon. giving us our product. Okay, now what you are actually using as your nucleophile, the SCH3, this sulfur has three lone pairs and a negative charge, so you are still using a lone pair as your nucleophile. So one thing to take out of this so one thing to take out of this is we have a positive electrophile, we have a negative nucleophile, and these come together, positive and negative, give us a neutral product. Now let's compare this with um, a similar sulfur nucleophile that's not negatively charged, but neutral. I'll abbreviate our aromatic ring as just a pH now. But here's our electrophile. Now what I'm going to use is HSCH3 is a nucleophile. This you cannot break apart into ions. So we have to take advantage of the lone pairs from the sulfur. That will attack the carbocation. This forms a bond to the sulfur. The sulfur still has the CH3 and the hydrogen attached. But now, since sulfur has three bonds, it gains a negative 
or a positive charge. So with this, in this type of step, we have a positive electrophile, a neutral nucleophile, positive and something neutral gives us something positive. So that's why when using these neutral nucleophiles, we always require a second step, a proton transfer step, to get rid of this proton that's still attached. Here we can use some base from the solution just to come in and take that proton, and that will leave us with our neutral product. So it's really important to be able to recognize um, these reactants as being something that will dissociate into ions and carry a negative charge versus something that is neutral, which is going to react a little bit differently. Now you can see we ended up with the same product. We have this um, SCH3 group at the benzylic position. Same thing in our first example, but it does change how the mechanism works.